A cranky old grump is scared of Donald Trump. Our video of the day comes to us from musician and hair plug model Bruce Springsteen, who recently endorsed Kamala Harris for president at Rolitz Fen. Donald Trump is the most dangerous candidate for president in my lifetime. His disdain for the sanctity of our Constitution, the sanctity of democracy, the sanctity of the rule of law, and the sanctity of the peaceful transfer of power should disqualify him from the office of president ever again. Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz are committed to a vision of this country that respects and includes everyone, regardless of class, religion, race, your political point of view, or sexual identity. But like you, I've only got one vote, and it's one of the most precious possessions that I have. That's why, come November 5th, I'll be casting my vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. Mm. <laughs> And I thought his concerts were long. <laughs> yeah, the man who once sang, hey, little girl, is your daddy home, has opinions <laughs> on the country you'll leave to your kids. It was nice of Bruce, though, to call his vote one of the most precious possessions he has. If I were him, I would have mentioned his 400-acre horse farm instead. But there's no doubt Kamala was born to run this country into the ground. His words <laughs> attacking Trump sound like Ryan Ruth, except Ruth probably has a better voice. As for the people Springsteen pretends to represent, inflation is killing them. With these electric bills, everybody is dancing in the dark. Mm. <laughs> nice. nice. Well done. Well done. Lionel, uh, he's got, does, is he not aware? I mean, I, you could say, okay, it's brave of him because he's, I assume that millions of his fans are Trump supporters. They're in that age group. But he's made his billions, so he doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I think he's in the, in, in the diner talking like this, you know, like a regular guy living in the diner, you know, relating to the people, <laughs> letting you know this is the most important thing you, you'll ever do, you know? So he's <laughs> pretending like he has, you know, lung cancer yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> in a diner. Yeah. You know, which we all relate to. So I think he's counteracting in that way. And, yeah. you know, I think it hurts to see Taylor Swift have so much clout, you know? And we all want clout at the end of the day, right? And so seeing Taylor have clout, he's trying to match it with this. And he's got to come out with hits. You know, if you want people to follow you, you need to be a hit maker. Yeah. He's, um, he's very predictable, Kennedy. You know, he's like, he's like everything he just said, you could hear from anyone else. And I thought this guy was a rebel. He's not a rebel. He's the human embodiment of a fart in a jar. <laughs> Accurate depiction. Thank you. Accurate, yes. You know, he's like he's like Neil Young. Yeah. yeah. Like, who pulled your chain, cranky? <laughs> he was he was married to a woman from my hometown of Lake Oswego, Oregon, Julianne Phillips. Oh yeah. And he broke her heart. Yeah. Oh. He does not exist in my world anymore. <laughs> he can take his rotten mildew flannel and go shove it where the sun don't shine. Oh. With his hit makerless arse. <laughs> I don't care about him. I don't care about George Clooney. These guys who are worth hundreds of millions of dollars, they don't care about the working man they pretend to support because they're insulated from a recession if there is one. It doesn't matter what god awful policies will follow her if she becomes president. He doesn't care. He's got enough money, which makes him a horrible person. Mm, speaking of horrible person. <laughs> You know, I got lucky when I escaped the monologue unscathed, but you're, you're making up for it in the next You know, class. I will never turn on my fans. Appreciate it. Todd, if you had fans. Right, sure. Uh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I, it's just, I find it weird that he thinks that Trump is scary. Right. It's like, does he know what real fear is? Like, I, I'm trying to think of any Springsteen song where he, sung, uh, he, he sang a song about actual things to be scared of, whether it is crime or terror. He's scared of a threat to democracy, this, like, fantasy fear. Yeah, to Kennedy's point, all of his songs are about financial fear. But that's pretty rich coming from a guy who literally a few years ago sold his music catalog for half a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So he has no ability to relate to the common man anymore. Maybe in 1975, but as we approach 2025, it's over. Also, to this overall point of celebrity endorsements, who in a swing state is sitting there and being like, you know, I'm on the fence between these two? 
who am I going to lean on to make my... Bruce Springsteen, everybody. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. So why do they do it? And in his case, it's newsworthy and noteworthy if he selected a Republican to endorse. But if he's going to endorse a Democrat for the 8,000th election in a row, that's not a big deal. You're Bruce friggin' Springsteen. We know you like the lips. <laughs> yeah. Right? You know, um, if it was Ruth Buzzy, I would feel differently. Yes. But you know, Tyrus, is this kind of like the same thing you saw with Howard Stern? Is that when, when you have uh, uh, millions of fans that have supported you, got you to where you are, once you get to that place, you get new friends. And when you get new friends, you don't need your fans. I, you're a thousand percent right. What I think is even worse is when they don't believe their own mm -hmm. Because I don't need to read from a cue card to tell you that I'm voting for President Donald Trump. Yeah. You know, I don't need a cue card for that. I can, I can sit here for an hour and tell you the reasons why. When you have to, another thing is like, they're so out of touch. First of all, listen, I'm not a fashion mogul, but even I know you don't wear a, a button up under a button up. Like this dude's just, <laughs> You know what I'm True. saying? Like, he's got a button-up flannel with a button-up... Like, take the flannel off. You're pissing off a lot of lesbian lumberjacks. Okay? <laughs> he actually does look like the lesbian lumberjack. Yeah, he does, really. I, I was like, whoa, sorry, ma'am. Um, <laughs> but this is the problem with them. Like, he, they, they come to him, and he... Don't, one thing I say, he reads better than Kamala does. Yeah. He was able to do it without nervous laughing and checking his earpiece. So he did much, much better. But then again, when you have to read that long of yeah. to get it out, no one's paying attention. Mm -hmm. Like it was, if he was, if it was something he was passionate about, he should be able to say it. Talk to us. Look as yeah. He doesn't know how he feels. Yeah. That's why he has to have somebody, someone write it for him. Interesting. All right. Up, coming up, MSNBC goes ballistic when a tr never Trumper becomes realistic. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.